the network. Wow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another link up today. I got Teacup yet again. I think this is her third time on the link up series. And look, man, it's because she keeps on bringing some value in. She got some sauce for y'all today. That is how to bring, I mean, how to submit to blogs. She's going to give y'all some specific blogs to submit to. And trust me, there will be some quality here. First and foremost, though, like this topic isn't something that's as popular as it used to be, right? Because yep. a lot of people don't think it's worth submitting to blogs at all. So in your opinion, right, why do you want to talk about submitting to blogs? Why do you think it's still something that's actually worth spending time on? Um, so blogs, I would say, I don't want to say that they're non-existent anymore. I feel that they have revised, they become more modern, mm. um, because instead of just checking websites or just checking like subscriptions, blogs are very relevant now because everything is digital now, like, you know, with COVID and everything and people can't come outside, people are more so going to be online, you know, searching for music and looking for new artists. And nowadays, you know, a blog just isn't just one website or one Twitter page that tweets out all the music. Now, blogs can be even the Instagram pages that post all the new music, you know, like, mm -hmm. so blogs can be like, say cheese or balls can be like dirty glove bastards so those are what we consider now blogs instead of the older typical blogs where everybody had the wordpress and everybody was just writing up now those are still relevant too um especially if you're on twitter i tell every artist to get on twitter get on twitter why is it's, that um, because Twitter is more so a, it's easier to click links. So when you go to Instagram, you got to go to somebody's page, you see it on a story, you see it on a page and you got to go click on a page and you got to go click on a bio. Then it opens up another app, you know, mm. to take you somewhere else. And that's too much work for a lot of people on Twitter. You could just click the link when you see the tweet and it goes straight there. And then a lots of blogs and platforms and things like that, that already have their people that there are people on Twitter that do still subscribe to Twitter blogs. So, you can just go in there and click and then somebody can find you just like that got you got you so you would say a under utilized route would not just be getting posted on some of these ig pages which that's a great point that those are the modern day blogs those are still considered blogs even though we might not think of them in the same way or brand them as heavily that way but you would say it's underutilized to actually look for somebody who's popping on twitter blog wise and, and trying to get posted with them yeah so it's not so that's very relevant like people still do that like people still follow complex and people still follow hot new hip-hop you know to see what's out and people still look at those things because if you really think about it like a lot of celebrity news a lot of celebrity news but so if you really think about it, a lot of celebrity news, you find it on Twitter first. So you'll find it on mm, Twitter first. True. And then usually it's reposted onto Instagram, you know, like like right. Shave, they post a lot of tweets. You right. know what I'm saying? So Twitter is very active as far as people subscribing to certain celebrities or subscribing to certain things. Got you. Got you. Like, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Now let's go ahead and get into just the practicality those technical steps of how to submit to blogs what are, what are your steps and what are people missing when they even think to do it okay so when people submit is that noise a lot in the background it's a little bit it's there a little bit all right we had to pause for a quick second but again teacup how do you submit to blogs okay so how to submit to blogs okay so for one what you always need to do is you need to research these blogs that you want to be a part of. So go check out their websites, go check out their content, go look at their about section and make sure you match the type of content that they post. So for example, I mentioned Dirty Glove earlier, right? So Dirty Glove has more so a trap, you know, street aesthetic to it. So if you're somebody that's like pop, you know, or alternative, you may not align with their platform or or even if you do submit to their platform it may cost you more you know to be on their platform because it really doesn't align with the type of audience that they have so uh, you so you're saying that some people actually post stuff that they know that isn't really 
in line with their platform, but they just still say, hey, look, I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to take the check, though. Right. So, I mean, not necessarily saying people do that. Some people may decline you, but that may be something if you really want to be on somebody's platform, you know, you may not align with what they have. Gotcha. Just like, you know, if you're if, you, if it's an R&B platform, you know, you're having rap music or just straight spitting type music, you know, why would you submit to an R&B blog, you know? So you may get denied or you may be charged more, you know, that's just the either or to it. Um, gotcha. What should I say? Um, so submitting a blog is always research and make sure your music aligns with their content. You always want to look at the specific writers on blogs, like when it comes to like, complex or rap radar and stuff like that you want to look specific to the writers and you can find them on instagram to even see like the type of content they post and of course support these people like support the writers support the blogs you know show love you know and make sure it's genuine even after they do post you you know still continue to show love because that's how you build that relationship and then they can still keep up with what you're doing um Submitting to blogs. Okay, so you will always need a bio. You will need a press release or you will need an EPK. So a press release and an EPK are two different things. Both should include a bio, right? So the bio always tells about who you are, you know, just a little bit about your background with music. Um, And then with the press release, that's usually promoting a specific single project or video so it includes the bio and then it includes a description of what the content is that you're looking to have shared or posted um an epk is an electronic press kit so it's basically like a digital resume for an artist um so an epk can include some press sources so once you do start to get onto different blogs you can include the different blogs that you are featured on in your epk so that people can click and reach them But basically, an EPK is a one-stop shop or a one-stop document, um, usually a PDF document where you can click inside of it and you can see your videos, you can see all of your songs, you can even have links to YouTube videos and performances, and you can have links to other press. So an EPK may not always be necessary initially if you're just starting out as an artist because you you know you may not have anything to put inside of that portfolio but definitely you need a bio and a press release specifically when you're submitting to these websites um always when you submit introduce yourself that needs to be the first thing that you do you need to introduce yourself include that bio include a description of the song or whatever you're sending. Now it doesn't have to be a novel. It does not have to be, you know, I believe a good intro, one to two sentence intro, and then a paragraph of a bio and a paragraph of the content that you're posting. I think that should be good with a press release. Um, because- right, hold on one second, one second. Mm-hmm. So when you say paragraphs, how long would that paragraph of a bio be? Because I've received some emails and some people might say, oh, this is one paragraph, but the paragraph is like, it, it is a novel. And I don't think I understand that some people want to, um, you know, get get their stuff off and they're trying to sell themselves. Mm-hmm. But nobody's going to read need all, all that. that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. You don't need all that. Because people are usually like, you typically bloggers have thousands of submissions, you know. And as much as you want to tell your story, a lot of times we just want to get what's going to catch us you know we want to find something interesting you know something that's going to stick and something that's going to align um so yeah we don't need novels (laughs) i always recommend if you're sending like a song i always recommend the first 30 seconds of that song to hit so if you just got 30 seconds of a beat you know of somebody just talking and the intro wasn't catchy People are going to click. People are going to trash that and go to the next, you know? So you definitely want to have yeah. something of interest to hook people because you got to remember people, you're not the only person <laughs> submitting to these blogs. Um, always include your links and the embed code inside your submission. And the reason why is because you want to make everything as convenient to submit to that contributor. Right? So, Again, if you have, if a contributor has thousands of people, you know, in their emails, you don't want people to, you know, just, you don't want, you don't want people to have to, oh, dang, well, I can't post them because 
I don't have the link to the video or, you know, even just having to click and even though it's simple to go to YouTube and grab the embed code to a lot of people, that's still a lot of work. And the embed code is the code that goes onto websites or goes onto pages where it's shared. Mm. Um, always have a thumbnail, always have a thumbnail as an attachment or even better if you can get a video clip as an attachment in a Google drive link. So that always helps as well, but especially having a thumbnail because nobody wants to have to go and like go to your Instagram and try to screenshot it. And then, you know, again, that's just a lot of work. So you always want to include the thumbnail, the embed code and include, I always recommend hyperlinks to social media. So not just writing out the social media, but making a clickable link to where they can go and see your pages. Got it. Got it. Make everything as easy as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So then, you know, once it's submitted, of course, share the link. Definitely share the link because that lets people know, you know, you're showing love. You know, you're not thinking too, you know, like too good for this or too high of this. That's definitely showing appreciation. Um, so you will want to thank the contributor, of course. What I always recommend um, just to build relationships because let's say if you find a contributor with complex and you know, you eventually want to have a exclusive premiere, you know, or something of that sort. Um, again, some people may charge for that, but relationships do help because of somebody, if a contributor has really grown with you and you know, you're always submitted to them and you're, you know, supporting their content and they're just building that relationship with you, then you can, you know, eventually get an exclusive release. Um, I always say, you know, send, you know, if you have little merch items, send them merch, you know, send them thank you things, you know, for supporting. That's really what you should do with any fans, you know, just to keep them, you know, engage or to let them know that you do appreciate them. Um, but yeah, most importantly, just make sure, you know, grammar, everything is good. Make sure there is an introduction. Um, thank them for their time, even when you are submitting, because remember, nobody has to even take a look at it. Um, and make sure to include all the proper links, all the proper content so that nobody has to, you don't have to inconvenience the person to go and find different things so. got you got you but so i mean you, you listed a lot of things do you have a i don't know a write-up or a sheet that people can go to, to to really reference these things and maybe almost go through it like a checklist Okay. Um, I guess I can get one. Now, what you can use if you want to use like a checklist, um, there's lots of press releases on Google. Um, it shows like a lot of examples of how to make a press release. And then I can, you know what, that is a good idea. I actually should come up with a checklist for this just to make it more, Do it. Do yep, it. Just make it more convenient so you can go down and yeah. make sure. Hey, it slap the logo on and everything and then we'll get it out. All right. Bet, bet. And yeah, so the exciting part, because I know y'all are here for the tea, but what blogs you can submit to. So I'm going to say blog slash platforms because some people do their promotions through like their email blasts. Um, and then some people do like their promotions through again, through like Instagram and things like that versus just having the WordPress type website. Um, so in Atlanta, so we do have dirty glove bastards. I did mention them. Um, Say Cheese is a big one. I know they're mostly based in Texas, but they're huge as well. Um, we also have Meet the Underdog. So that's a thriving Instagram profile that a lot of people go to to see a lot of content that is especially based here in Atlanta. Um, so Swan Beck, she has a blog site as well. She also has a performance platform here in Atlanta for artists to perform. And that's also a good person to connect with as well. If you're looking to get in contact with other PRs or press um, or blogs and things like that. So she has those contacts. Um, Coalition DJs, that's a good platform for performing also. And then they also have a newsletter promoting artists and things like that. Um, the Progress Report. That's a good one also. So I know they mostly promote artists. Their blog is like their email and their newsletter. And that's how they promote a lot of artists as well as they have an interview platform. Oh. Um, 
physical blogs, websites. So there's Broke to Dope that's based here. Spill the Tea, like myself, Spill the Tea. I do have a social media blog where I post on Twitter and Instagram. Um, DJ Iceberg, he has a website where it's all down Twitter and Instagram. He's always posting content. Precise Ears is a good one. Both Precise Ears and DJ Iceberg have been both running for some time. Um, let's see. Dope People Meet, Portia Marie. She has a good platform, so she puts people in her newsletter to promote. Um, and then Background Co. I know that's one of the newer blogs that I'm familiar with. Um, I know they like to give personalized write-ups on things. So if you're looking for something, um, if you're looking to have something more tailored to your uniqueness and um, somebody that promotes like those smaller artists. So that's definitely background co. Um, and then the daily note, those are my friends based in Rhode Island. So they also have a blog where they tweet out daily on Twitter, as well as post on their website for content. So, yep. If you are reading, definitely make sure you, Rewind and write these down because, again, some of these blogs, they do have the websites that tweet them out or that post daily on their websites, but a lot of people use email and text marketing to be able to reach their audience, so that definitely gives a more direct access to artist content and things like that. Interesting. Interesting. So when you compiled this list, is this something that you use um, – like normally, do you ever work with other blogs and since you have your own blog or how does that relationship work? Um, yes, I most definitely work with other blogs, um, even with having my own blog, um, because it kind of takes more than one thing to break an artist or to get people's attention. So people can see something on my blog and then can go back and look on like the progress report page or something and then see it again. And it's going to make them like, okay, well, let me go want to check out this person. So, you know, just the more visibility, the more people are going to want to see like, Hey, what's going on. So I definitely use these blogs um, when artists do purchase services from me and things like that, um, because I have relationships with them as well. So, and yeah, and of course going through me, if a person you know, with you trying to build that relationship, of course, with me already having a relationship, it would be more, you know, likely for them to engage with the content that I have and things, mm -hmm. the things that I submit. But always, if you want to just, you know, go on your own, search for yourself, especially things like, especially blogs like Say Cheese and Dirty Glove. I know a lot of people go for the shade room, but that's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's whew. But those are very more, you know, popular when it comes to like people checking on Instagram for content. So yeah, got you. Bet, bet. I appreciate you coming with the sauce yet again. Um, where should they follow you? Make sure you spell that out for them. Okay, so you can follow me on Twitter. That's T E W A C U P underscore, and then Instagram add a P. So that's T E W A C U P P underscore. Bet, bet, bet. Yeah, everybody, that's Teacup once again. And it's another, yet another brand man link up. Y'all have a good one. If you like this video, go ahead to the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. It's the network.